Hello and welcome to How the Light Gets In and to our session on Beyond Material. Now, the topic for this morning is, of course, materialism and beyond. Is the world made of just one kind of stuff, physical stuff? That's been a popular view in the sciences for perhaps over 100 years, although more recently in science, we have abandoned simple views of what the material is in favor of talk of fields and energy. And people have increasingly appealed to mathematics and information as the basic building blocks. So is materialism still going to do the work we hope it's going to do in providing us with an account of or a basis for descriptions of reality? After all, it has problems making room for and providing explanations of consciousness. So should we embrace other kinds of perhaps immaterial dimensions to reality? And if we do so, will they help us with our explanation? Will they put us in a position to see a better account of many of the other things that we are want to take into our story about the full and exhaustive furniture of reality? Or are they always going to leave us feeling that there must be some underlying physicalist or materialist explanation of what reality consists of? With me to discuss these, I've got a panel of uh, sparkling speakers. We have Bernardo Castro. Now, Bernardo is a computer scientist. He's been a CERN collaborator uh, with, with uh, the physics there, a philosopher as well, and a denier of material reality. Bernardo is perhaps one of the most prominent defenders now of metaphysical idealism. We also have Nancy Cartwright. So Nancy Cartwright is a professor of philosophy at the University of California, San Diego, as well as Durham University. And Nancy identifies herself as part of the Stanford School of Philosophy, who argue against too unified a view of science and place greater emphasis on understanding the practice of science over abstract theorizing. Finally, we've got Peter Atkins, who's an outspoken atheist, I'm told, but also a chemist and an author of popular works of science, such as Atkins Molecules. So, speakers, thanks for joining me and joining all of us here online. I'm going to invite all of our speakers now to take three minutes to set out their stall and to address the question, does anything non-physical exist? So, can we start with you, Bernardo? Well, it, I think it largely depends on what we really mean by the physical. If by the physical we mean this world of perceptions around us, these colors, shapes, uh, phenomena, and objects that we see around us, to deny this is, is just silly. Uh, so I don't deny the perceptual world that physics uh, studies, models, and predicts. Denying any of that is just silly. Um, but we, in our culture, have taken a step further. Uh, we say that uh, this world, at its fundamental basis, is not made of qualities, the qualities of perception, of colors, uh, melodies, and flavors. None of that. Underlying this world, there is a material world or a physical world that is fundamentally outside, independent, and beyond experience. Um, and that, I think, is a mistake. And I'll tell you why. I think the way this happened was that um, we start from qualities, our experiences. And at some point, we figured out that uh, with quantities, we could describe the relative differences between qualities in a very handy way. For instance, it feels different to lift a heavy rock or to lift a feather. And we could encode that difference uh, with numbers, such as mass and weight. Handy abstractions that allow us to describe this world of quality or the difference between blue and red, which we can describe as a delta in frequency. Um, and this was all very handy. And then the next thing we realize is that we all inhabit the same world, at least largely the same. That's also undeniable. There is something out there. There is some context out there where we are all immersed. And that's why our experience of the world is so mutually consistent. And then we thought, well, guess what? If this world out there is outside our individual minds, it must be outside mind itself. Now, this is bad logic, but I think that's what happened. And then we asked, so what is there beyond mentation? Oh, 
we have these handy quantities here, these handy numbers that we've been using to describe qualities. Maybe they exist in and of themselves. They have a standalone existence. And there we went. We replaced the concreteness of the world for a abstraction that we sort of reified as having its own existence. We replaced the world by a description of the world. And now we try to reduce the world of qualities to a world of pure abstract quantities that by definition exclude our qualities. And, and then we are surprised with the hard problem of consciousness, which is just an artifact of bad thought, uh, in my view. We, we've taken a very wrong, very bad and examined step early on. We've become invested in it, and now we are paying the price for it, and we talk about, oh, one day we will solve the hard problem. Of course not. It's just an artifact of, uh, of bad thinking. So do I think there is a world beyond the physical? Well, beyond the physical defined as that which is not qualitative and experiential, I would say, sure, uh, 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 because th that thing is just an abstraction of mind. It doesn't really exist. It's just a conceptual narrative we tell ourselves. There is something beyond, but that beyond is the concrete world of experience. Uh, um, we do not need to explain objective reality by getting out of mind. We just need to get out of individual minds. I think the world that is really out there is a world of transpersonal, mental states. Not in, maybe not intelligence, not deliberate, doesn't have a plan. I'm not talking about these things. I'm talking about raw transpersonal uh, states, which modulate our inner world of perception and give rise to this world of qualities around us. Good. Thank you. So um, you see the problem of how we accommodate consciousness in the world as, as the problem of having excluded qualities. And so you start with, with the qualities right there, center stage, and then you're going to have to reconstruct bits of the world from these transpersonal uh, intersecting or overlapping consciousnesses. Okay, that's, that's, that's one way to do it. So let's hold that thought and then let's, uh, we'll come back to it, I'm sure. Let's go to Nancy now. Uh, is there more than physical things that we have to uh, concede in our ontology? Oh, Barry, I think the question doesn't make sense. Okay. Or I've I've never seen a really good way to make sense of it. Um, most of the, it's often put in terms of the physical or the material, and most of the, both materialists and anti-materialists I know, are happy to lump under the term material all sorts of things that are obviously not material, um, many of which you said at the very beginning, uh, that we study, uh, some of them we study in modern physics, like forces, fields, energy, space-time curvature. Um, so I worry uh, that the term tends to get used, or it often is used, as a way of claiming the metaphysical high ground without the effort of honest toil. The mm -hmm. argument tends to go, sometimes a very simple argument, um, look here, A, <laughs> we all know that only the material exists. B, what you're talking about isn't material, so C, what you're talking about doesn't exist. Now, in order for that <laughs> argument to work, we have to have three things. One is we need a really good characterization of what's meant in it by the material. Similarly, if we want to say there's nothing material, right? We need a really good characterization of what we mean by that. Second, we need a really good argument that what um, all, all that exists is material or immaterial and in the very way that we've characterized the concept and then three we need a really good argument that what the opposition likes isn't material in that very same sense that we've characterized it and i've actually never seen um, a good case where all three of these uh, came properly together one way to try and give more content to the um, that some people have tried to give more content to the idea of the physical or the material is to really to focus on the idea of physical and say that well what we're really talking about is what physics studies mm. well now even if we were uh, just to look at reality through the lens of modern science there are hundreds of sciences uh, beyond physics and hundreds of thousands of kinds of things that 
these sciences take seriously as working parts of the world, from neuron gates and DNA strings to civil war, um, sexual harassment, uh, implicit bias, uh, or even epistemic injustice. Um, and um, are, so, are some of these material and some not? And if some of them are not, what's wrong with them? Or if all of them are, what's wrong with that? I mean, what, <laughs> what's the difference here and what's wrong with it? As far as I can see, um, there's no reason to believe uh, that these thousands of different kinds of things divide neatly into two categories, the physical, the non-physical, or that they, where the two categories have any real content, or alternatively, to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.